So here is chapter 6D, project D, chapter 06D, and it's called Bill Stepper, which is what it is. It's um, an example of, of marketing piece that you could stick in a bill, stuff into a bill, an envelope, um, eight and a half by three inches here. So it fits perfectly and kind of just throw in an advertisement while you're sending the bill for your business. So it's a typical piece of graphic design work. Um, graphic design is mostly advertising. And um, so what we're going to do is, for this lesson, introduce how to adjust columns. So we're going to create a document, again, with a bleed. So a little bit of recap on bleeds. And then also, um, let's see, create a hanging indent, which I think we sort of did already. And then also focus on showing all the printer's marks. Let me get started. So first I'm going to create a new document and then number of pages one doesn't need to be facing. Um, it's letter size width, although um, the height is three inches. So three of these can fit on one letter or 3.5 actually, 3.5 inches. Three of these little meal stuff, stuffers can fit on an eight and a half by 11 letter size paper. And then we want two columns, okay? And then we also need to make sure we have that bleed, which is an eighth of an inch. Um, basically one, two, five, point one, two, five inches. And if you press the little link chain, it, it links them all so they are all, all the same bleed on all the sides. And okay, so it looks like this. And then what we want to do is move this guide the column over. So I have to go back and check to see how I did that. Okay, yes, it says it in the handout. That's really helpful. So if you go to view on um, grids and guides and then uncheck lock column guides. So by default, your column guides are locked so you can't accidentally move them. But if you unlock them and you hover your mouse over one of the guides, um, you can drag it when you get that double double sided arrow to where you want it and in this case they want it to, at the 4.75 line if you look up top of the ruler you can see that it, it shows you where it is so 4.75 inches three quarters of an inch yeah okay so that's where they want it and then I can lock it again, um, where is it, grids, guides, lock, column guides, so that I don't accidentally move it again. And then we're going to place our image, so controller, command D, to place. And it's in the bill stuffer folder. And, whoops, try that again. Okay. All right. So what we want to do is now adjust the image so that it fits from edge to edge in the column guide and then from bleed to bleed. Whoops. And right now I just adjusted the frame actually. It's kind of like a window that the picture sits in. So if I want to select the window, I double click and then what I can see here is that the bounding box changes color. So when I have the frame selected, the frame selection is blue. But then when I have the image selected, if I double click, it turns yellow. So that's how you can distinguish between whether you have the frame selected or the actual image within the frame. And um, whenever scaling an image, please hold shift so that you can constrain the proportions of the image. Otherwise, if I don't hold shift, I could end up smooshing the house one way or another, too skinny or too fat. Um, like so, so always hold shift and then um, you just adjust it to the edge of that column. In between the two columns there's a little space and that's called the gutter. I don't know if we went over that, but um, the gutter will is just basically a little bit of breathing room between where the image will be and where the text will be. because The text will put on the other side in the other column. 